Hey everyone, in this video we're gonna be breaking down the following typical themes of the King's Indian defense. How to counter the aggressive Queen d2 combined with Bishop h6. How to take advantage of a very common mistake that beginners do. How to checkmate with uh, Knight and Bishop. And at the end of the video we will be countering the cheap tricks with Bishop c4 and Knight g5. Alright, we're getting the black pieces. When it opens up with uh, d3. He's gonna go g6 and get a fianchero and i guess we'll just react accordingly see what my opponent does okay opponent plays knight c3 i was obviously threatening to collect the pawn on b2 so he blocks that by going knight c3 just gonna be going for knight f6 and uh getting ourselves ourselves castled play with d6 he's going for perhaps an aggressive setup with bishop h6 still not really worried about us too much as I think we should definitely have enough counter play. So his play is just to push this pawn, which is in fact a bit dangerous. Okay, I'm gonna be tricky and play c6. Hoping he plays h4. Still, I'm gonna be tricky. Hitting the pawn. I think he might just be castling long. Yeah, okay. If he would have played rook b1, um, I actually had in mind to go bishop takes and then uh, queen takes on f2. Giving up the queen because of knight g4 and we win it back. But we do keep the extra pawn. So castling for him is okay, but I think he's just uh, winning for us after knight g4, knight takes on f2, or we can take the pawn on f2. Yeah, this is definitely winning uh, three pawn, but this might be even stronger. I think I'm gonna play it. Maybe queen f4 is like a good move for my opponent that I maybe underestimated because on knight f2. He has knight a4 ideas, perhaps. Yeah. Knight f2, knight a4 is kind of the only fighting chance. But I can at the very least play queen a5 and we trade knights and we're still good to go. Mm, okay, against knight h3, I think. And just pick up any rook, take on h3. Anything wins, but uh, yeah, just this one is the cleanest. The opponent is going for the, for the plays, going knight g5. And that would actually be a checkmate if he'd be in time with it but yeah I could just uh, stop it with f6 i think and many many ways of dealing with this another pretty funny one is to just uh, bring the queen back home I think i'm gonna do that just because it's even more aesthetic bring the queen to g7 pretty much just fianchettoing my queen which is generally not ideal but in this case, it's exactly what we needed. So, King is now very safe. And we are actually pretty likely to rescue the knight. And we're having a lot of, lot of material. I mean, a lot of extra material. So, just d5. Time to get ourselves developed. We want a lot of material, we just need to get ourselves developed and uh, start trading a lot of pieces. That would be the strategy from this point. Takes with a knight, gonna go like knight e7. So it's actually wrong that we'll be able to rescue the knight, but he can take it. It's not really an issue as we're up a full rook for the time being and after he takes the knight will still be up the exchange, so now just gonna be going for the trades, expecting him to take on h1, gonna be taking on e4, followed by potentially bishop f5 and trying to trade. Actually a funny idea that I came up with was that uh, well Queen's playing a nice defensive role, but could even be an attacking piece if we get a pawn to a3. The knight could be potentially undefended. I saw that he can take, but I thought it's a poison pawn as in some positions we could use the e file. Not immediately though, obviously, but let's push the pawn first for starters. See if he plays a3. I think he's supposed to. Yeah, I mean, could take on d4, but I'll start with this. Just weakening his king and then planning to take this guy. And the Fianchero Queen is actually gonna be the piece that's sort of closing the game. Very hard to defend the knight, I mean, already impossible. And when he moves it away, I have ideas to play Queen A1. 94. So, he's planning to play some Knight F6. 
which I think can be met like in G7, it's not really like a huge problem, but I'm thinking how about going like queen b2 and try to set up uh, like a force mate or could even do rook d8, try to catch his king in a mating net. I have many ideas. I think I'll start bishop f5. That's maybe the cleanest. Because like on knight f6, king g7, knight is attacked and also queen b2, queen takes on c2 will be a threat. This is not really an issue though because of... Could have taken the free knight but I think this is even stronger. Trying to play for checkmate instead. And yeah, like king d2 only move. Can eliminate the knight, could play rook d8. Mm, I think just eliminating the knight followed by uh, rook e8 is kind of cleanest. Well, like rook d8, he has bishop d3. So that's why I'm starting this way. And now uh, I'm gonna do queen e5. Hitting the bishop and on bishop d3, we have checkmate on e3. I mean, not checkmate, but I put an annoying check on e3. Maybe I was wrong. You can still play king c3 there. Which I missed, but uh, yeah, this looks to be kind of mating now. Actually, just rook d8 is fine, and bishop d3. Take on e1 with checkmate, or uh, checkmate on e1, or even b2 is fine. So, yeah, we managed to get this game. Getting the black pieces, against e4, and more or less against anything. Gonna be setting up the fianchero. And interesting to see that opponent is playing in the center. Most beginners. Uh, do not do that, which is not good. But okay, we'll see e5, which is actually a pretty typical mistake for the trading range. And now the way to go is just to play c5, with the main point being that, well, if dc we manage to win the center pawn, we're most likely gonna win the c5 pawn as well, and that would just be much better for black right off the bat on move three. I'm gonna play c3, which is actually a good move. Keeping the pawn chain uh, sort of solid, but we can take and play d6. Still trying to undermine his pawn. And after ed queen d6, he has isolated pawn that we can attack. And on knight f3, can just play knight c6, threatening to take, expecting bishop b5 or ed. Okay, d5. Already you can see that uh, white is unable to keep the the pawns. Can just take the free one on e5 with uh, an extra pawn. But remember the key move against e5, c5. That is how you want to start, and this is generally going to give you a good position. If you don't play c5, it's going to be kind of awkward to develop. Like, um, could still do d6, knight h6, castle, but it's kind of fishy. So c5, good move, well done, and then I think you should be good to go. So in this position, though, opponent plays bishop b5. This is the game that we're playing now, and after bishop d7, expecting trade. Just go for it, but up a pawn, and I think he's gonna castle short. We see g3, no really understanding that move, but um, not even gonna try to. So I could play knight f6, but then maybe f4 is uh, something that we need to watch out for in the bishop's trap. So, also, like knight f6 generally allows bishop h6, which could be a bit annoying. So, easiest bishop back, play knight f6, get yourself castled. Respect the common sense rules of chess and uh, generally you'll be rewarded. If you don't get rewarded, uh, well, it happens sometimes. But you still uh, should do that and in the long run, uh, it's gonna be a huge difference. Okay, opponent plays knight c3. We have an idea to play aggressive with knight g4. But first, rooks on the open files. You play natural moves and activate all of your pieces and then you start looking for concrete lines. Okay, knight e4. Now we have sort of finished development. And we can look for more active options and yeah, I think just trading is fine. Just take on e4, rook takes force. And then we see the only issue that we have is that we have a backward pawn on e7, which opponent could try to attack. We can easily defend it, but yeah, I mean still not very simple just yet. Could think about going e5. Idea d, f, e, and you got rid of the backward pawn. That's in fact maybe best move. Gonna go e5, yeah. Not only move, but maybe easiest one. Like if he doesn't take Ambassade, we're going f5. And yeah, just like a dream position with the extra pawn and 
Bon Zalpushin. Yeah, but I'm maybe not even aware of the Ampasson, which is like not really a problem if you're a 500. The Ampasson, it's not like an easy thing to learn, but I mean, you should try to because it's positions like this where maybe it's very useful. So even if you would have played like D, we would have taken with the F pawn and black is much better. And I guess B4, let's go F5. Play in typical King's Indian fashion. And we have a pretty simple plan. We want to push the pawn to f3 and queen h3, queen g2, checkmate. Can we get that? That would be pretty nice. It's not like the only idea. Like rook e1, e4 is also very strong, obviously. Putting pressure on the long diagonal. Maybe he gets bishop b2. He's gonna go f4. Now that he's tempting me with the rook on e2. f3 will be even stronger when it happens. So. Okay, it's not like... Against queen h3, he is defenseless because on queen h3, he always has queen f1, but still uh, something we need to keep an eye on. So f3, rook e4 is only move that's like kind of bothering me because queen h3, queen f1, and we have to trade. I would rather keep queens on the board. I'm thinking about more of like a precise way of playing this. Could be taking on g3. Yeah, I think we might actually do it and just not hope for cheap tricks yeah just gonna take rook f3 double up oh he took with the f1 which is interesting was not really expecting it now i think i'll play queen c7 or queen d8 even idea to bring it over to this diagonal just exploiting the fact that he took with the f1 do queen b6 seeking g2 could definitely trade a pair of rooks and they on b4, that's in fact maybe simplest. Um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna be perhaps taking on b4. Rook c8, rook c8. That's fine by me. Up to pawns. Safe king. Opponent was like a bit lucky that he wasn't getting instantly checkmated on the king side, but still the position is completely winning for me. Maybe rook c5 ideas, hitting the pawn. Just need to speed up a bit. Because we only have 28 seconds left. Could be in time, I think, because his position is pretty passive. Yeah, no way to defend d5 now. If we trade queens, endgame will be easily winning. It's easily winning with queens on the board as well, but I think even easier in the endgame here. We're gonna be doing a little bit of free moving. I think we kind of need it at this point. Rook d3. Rook b3 ideas. Could actually even do like e4 type of move. Sacrificing so we can clarify the position a bit. But uh, this now just helped me tremendously because we get to push them. Just b6. Stop rook b7. a5. Kind of blocking the rook. That's almost trapped. g4 only square. Pretty funny. Okay, his rook is almost trapped. I'm gonna try to trap his rook. Yeah, see, rook there and we're trapping it. How funny. This is pretty funny. Okay, he has rook a4. But he missed it. But I mean, I was about to like trap it anyways. <laughs> pretty simple plan now, just get checkmate. As g4 but uh, yeah. anyways would have been lost so we managed to get the game and i think can go for the next one okay so we're getting the black pieces against d4 just gonna be going for the fianchero we see that our opponent is placing pawns in the center which is a nice way for him to start and we see another e5 move which should be answered with c5 trying to undermine the e5 pawn if DC, we get to take it and we managed to basically we just wiped out white's center. Play C3 this is a pretty good move, but um, yeah, just gonna be taking D6. Let's see how opponent reacts. I think F4 is like the most solid one, but it's still good for us. I had a previous game where uh, opponent played knight F3. Now just gonna go knight C6. Idea to take one E5 twice on E D d6 we take with a queen and we play against the isolated pawn and my opponent previously played d5 and we took on e5 
And this one plays bishop b5, which is like a pretty common move. And queen a5 is usually an interesting motif, but they have uh, knight c3 against that, so it's not working just yet. So I'm thinking about bishop g4, but I'm wondering whether they can push d5, and I think that's the case. So maybe just d e d5. Have to think about this for a bit. So I wouldn't like to play bishop d7 and pinning because of e d. I have to take back with a pawn. Yeah, I think we're actually gonna play with d e, and then on d5 I'm planning to just go a6 and just uh, live with it. I think that's uh, the way to go. Bishop a4, b5 was the point. And yeah, okay, this end games just take win back the piece. We're having an extra pawn. We're definitely completely winning with a bishop pair, extra central pawn. This is just amazing now. CB just bishop takes, I mean, bishops are like dominating the board. This is like really nice to play e4 next, and bishops are just dominating. I think we have maybe even some ideas to castle long, even though I would probably prefer to uh, castle short here. So if I go e4, knight e4, that's actually winning a piece for me after bishop d4, rook d8, or rook d8 directly. So I'm actually liking that move because his last move, bishop e3, has weakened uh, the b2 pawn. And against this, we just do rook d8, pin him. Could even do it more stylish with castle, but. Uh, yeah, I think I, I'm just gonna go but like simple one. Bishop d4, rook d8, collect three piece, gg, go home, or like get ready for next game. <laughs> Maybe we're like home already, so. <laughs> um, yeah, could collect the bishop next. No much opponent can do about it. We're just gonna force a lot of trades and hopefully we can get into a winning end game. Finishing development, castle and rook coming to c8. That is pretty much the plan. Knight a3 hitting the pawn. I'm not really bothered by that idea precisely. We can just like prioritize development, even though we could definitely consider defending that pawn somehow. Um, yeah, could do anything here. I think I'm just gonna try to prioritize quick development, sort of sacrificing the pawn. Kind of forgot that he has knight c3 on check, but that's still fine. Okay, this is like a pretty funny idea, but it's not made quite yet. Okay, just 95 now. Idea to take on c3, play rook d3, win the pawn, king is weak. Yeah, rook d1, could just trade, take on c3, 9 before 93. Many, many ways to win this. I think I'll do knight c3, just kind of debating him to play rook d4 because of knight b5 which is like a very nice discovery yeah okay he didn't uh, allow it but uh, still we're completely winning could play rooks directly could play rook c4 i think i'm gonna go for the rook trade and we're winning this just by uh pushing the pawns i was expecting rook takes and wanted to say something like this should be the plan and just push the pawns but on king d1 taking this and this is obviously hopeless now. It was even before, but this is even worse. After rook a3, followed by bishop d5. Pawn is just uh, dropping. It's not even trying to defend, but... I'm gonna take trade rooks, trade everything. Just go for, like, easy win. See, this is... This is how you want to be winning games when you're, like, up a piece early on. Just want to trade everything and get into this kind of situations where when it has no kind of play so this way you're uh, making it way easier to win plus you're never really going to lose these type of positions like worst thing can happen would be something like uh, you know you stalemate somehow i mean you stalemate someone because you're having too many pieces but generally i think you should be able to convert this into a full win so, I mean, to a full point, so. Yeah, we're gonna be Zugzwanged, gonna be taking the E3 pawn, and. Gonna be taking that. King 
thingy one. Yeah, I'm just gonna be taking and then quitting. Not really much of what I can do about it. And hopefully you can get to see some chain waiting technique here. Do you guys want to do it like bishop and knight? Uh, a student of mine uh, told me that he's doing it on purple. That, that would be actually funny. Can we try it? Let's actually try to do the king and knight thing. Not sure I'm actually good enough to deliver it. I'll give my best. One hour later. Oh, I still made it. <laughs> okay, never mind. <laughs> Okay, we'll just assume that uh, we managed to take made this one. We're facing an 800 this time. I'm gonna go for the Yankero. And okay, C bishop C4. This is getting interesting because I'm really expecting them to play something like this, which is not super critical, putting pawns in the center, which is what they should be doing. They should be playing D4 in this position. But a lot of them won't. And I think we could just do c6, d5. We're getting pretty much like a Karo Khan with solid center. They never really get into the cheap tricks and we have easy development. This knight f6, get ourselves castled. We're gonna be castling. One of takes on h7, which is. A bit creative. Um, yeah, I don't really know what the point for that could be, but I'm gonna take it and try to argue that maybe we could be using that uh, age file for our rook. Okay, opponent just not gonna make a move, I guess. Uh, okay, opponent plays c4. Could do rook h8 and try to play for the mate, but I guess we'll just go for the end game. If he takes with a deep on trading queens, it's gonna be like an easy win. And now we're just gonna be getting developed. Bishop f5, targeting the weak pawn, queen d7, rook d8. Those are my next moves. Pretty easy and straightforward. Focusing on the weak pawn. Could also think about knight e5 in some positions, but we need to bring all the pieces into the action first. Okay, we see h4. Just gonna do rook d8. Threatening to take the pawn. Not really worried about any h5 moves. Yeah, I'm gonna be taking on hg, just take back for the bishop, d3 take with the queen. If he takes, I'm just gonna be taking with the, with the rook, and we're having an end game where I am up a piece. cg3, I'm gonna be playing knight e5, getting the c4 bishop, while also centralizing. Just knight f3, working the king and bishop, winning another piece, and uh, okay, bishop e4 could hurt on the next move. If he's not careful. Knight e2, taking the free knight and going bishop e4. Okay, give me all of them. Give me all of them. I'm I'm glad to capture a lot of stuff. Taking full rook, rook c8, and just go rook back. Taking with a bishop, and now we have like a pretty simple mating net, bishop f3, rook d1, and there's no way to actually avoid that. I mean, king e1, but we're playing ninety four. And opponent finds the resigned button. Okay, thanks a lot for making it this far into the video, and in case you're looking for more episodes from the same series, make sure to click one of the videos that will appear on the screen. So with that being said, I'd like to thank you for watching, and I'll see you around on the channel. Take care.